Hi friends, so today we start our lecture on helicopter dynamics. This is lecture 37, hover power loss. So today we are going to look at the different power losses which take place in this hover flight condition. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now we derived the equation for induced power loss in the previous lectures and that was CPI is CT 3 by 2 by root 2. Now this is sometime also known as the ideal rotor. So the power loss here is basically coming from momentum theory itself and nothing more. Now in reality there are more sources of power loss which we have to add to this particular power predicted by momentum theory. So the most important of these is going to be the profile power loss. Now, profile power loss happens because essentially you have blades and these blades move through the viscous fluid, which is air. And therefore there is going to be some extra term here, which we are going to later put in for a real rotor. So always remember that this is the minimum power which is required to generate thrust. For a given rotor and there are sources of power or there are requirements of power which are beyond this for any real rotor. So profile power loss is the most important. Then we have further power losses which take place due to the fact that the inflow is not uniform and this also happens because of swirl in the wake which is caused due to the rotor torque. Now this phenomena is typically small for helicopter rotors. Later in this lecture, I'm going to lay out all the different percentage values for each of these powers for a typical rotor. Now there are also tip losses. Here we are presuming that the rotor is essentially an actuated disc, but what happens is that there are finite number of blades and therefore these finite number of blades lead to tip losses and this particular phenomena is not incorporated in the actuator disk theory. So let's tabulate some of the actual power in a typical real rotor. So the induced power would be somewhere around 60% of the power of a real rotor. 30% would be required by profile power or would be consumed by profile power. Non-uniform inflow would be 5 to 7 percent. Swirl in the wake will be less than 1 percent and tip losses 2 to 4 percent. So these are the different possibilities here. Now swirl in the wake is a slightly different phenomena. Non-uniform inflow of course takes place because V is not same across the entire rotor disk which we are presuming in momentum theory. There is going to be some variation in this induced velocity in real life. Now the main rotor will absorb most of the rotor power, but there are also requirements from the transmission, the uh, different type of power equipment which you have and so on. So as far as the engine and transmission are there, they absorb four to 5% of the total power with typically turbine type of engines and six to 9% in case you are using the reciprocating type of engines. The tail rotor would also absorb about seven to 9% of the total helicopter power and one more power loss would happen due to the interference you have between the rotor and the fuselage and this would be something like 2%. So basically what you are seeing here is that the rotor is one of the components of a helicopter which require power and beside that you have several other components such as the tail rotor, the transmission system and so on where also power losses take place. So all these need to be factored in when you are selecting a power plant, power plant for the vehicle. 
So one of the main aspects in design is to find out the power requirement so that you can select the proper power plant. And so whenever you are calculating the induced power, you are getting about 60% of the real loader power. And then you have to add to this also all the different powers which are required by the tail rotor, the body, the transmission and so on. So to conclude, we can summarize that the induced power and profile power account for about 90% of the power required. And then we use certain factors to further improve this prediction capability. But these type of power are relatively simple to predict by different aerodynamic modeling. We predicted the induced power quite well by using momentum theory. And in later lectures, we are going to predict the profile power by considering the blade drag and so on. So if we are able to predict these two forms of power, we are pretty close to the actual power. And then we can multiply this predicted power by some number to increase it to get to the actual power required by the rotor. Now, this prediction is important because whenever you are designing a flying vehicle, whether it's a drone or a different vehicle, you are given some weight for this drone and the rotor must be able to lift this particular weight. And so you need to calculate what is the power required by this rotor and then maybe multiply it by some factor of safety and then figure out the power plant because the power plant must supply this type of power. And these power predictions are very important to make a decision of what type of engine you have to use, whether it is going to be a turbine engine or it is something which you can manage with batteries or some form of propulsion such as that. Because whenever you are using some battery to power these kind of vehicles, you must make sure that you are supplying enough power for this vehicle to lift off. And these problems are even important in some novel experiments where people try to get human powered rotorcraft. So again, that human there has to supply enough power for this vehicle to take off. So all these calculations actually can be made using momentum theory plus some aspects of profile power plus some factors of safety. So I will see you in my next video where we will start moving into climb.